le 7 novembre, la loi a été bafouée, les institutions paralysées. Et je devais, bien entendu, rétablir l'état de droit. Et j'ai fait ce que je dois faire, c'est-à-dire répondre à l'appel de, du devoir et à l'attente populaire. Alors finalement, justement, s'il ne s'agit pas d'un coup d'état militaire, est-ce qu'on peut parler d'un coup d'état médical non, Pourquoi un coup d'état médical il était, il était, Le président était malade. Il était dans un état euh, de, 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 de santé vraiment qui l'empêche de, 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 de gouverner. Hammam Sous. It was once a small forgotten village near the city of Sous, in the shadow of Monastir, the birthplace of Habib Bourguiba. Ben Ali was born here in 1936, in this modest house, number 11, Sidi El Garbi Street, and into a very modest family of 13. What do we know of this man who will govern Tunisia for 23 years? His father was a watchman in Sousse Port, and his mother, Selma, took care of her children and some olive trees. We know he loved his grandmother. He gave her name, Halima, to his youngest daughter. We also know he studied in the boys' lycée in Sousse. This school was an active center for the national movement and the Constitution Party. According to his official biography published in the 90s, when he was in power, he claimed he was active in the national movement. He also claimed he was expelled from the school and imprisoned. But there is no mention of this in the French police records. The child was named Blue because of his dark skin. His results were not good enough for him to finish his secondary schooling. He left early and drifted in the streets and ports of Sousse from one job to another until he joined the army. Tunisia was just then welcoming back her triumphant leader, Habib Bourguiba. He had led the negotiations for independence from France. Bahi Ladrum was appointed Minister of Defense, and he set up the Tunisian Defense Forces. France proposed helping the new state to train some of them. Cells of the dominant party began working and proposed candidates. One of the old resistance fighters might have asked Hedi Bakouche to include Ben Ali on the list. قناع الكتب العام تاع الشعبة بتقسيم ما هوش وحده قامني أنا معه أنا نسيت يمكن صحيح يمكن صحيح That is how Ben Ali was sent to the Saint Cyr Academy with some companions who will one day be reunited. The most important was Habib Amar. He became, later, the commander of the National Guard. 
and he opened the doors of the presidential palace in Carthage 20 years later, on 7th of November, 1987. Ben Ali returned from France and lived in the officer's quarter. He was close to General El Kefi, who had been an officer in the French army and who became chief of staff of the Tunisian army. Also close was the general's daughter, Naima. She was a pupil at the local Khaznadar school. Nobody knows how it happened, but Ben Ali got married to her. This marriage transformed Ben Ali's life. اشتغل ساق او ياور للجنرال كافي وحتى الكافي لم يكن جنرالا في ذلك الوقت كان كولونيل لانه انت تعرف مات بورقيبه والجيش التونسي كان فيه ثلاث جنرالات. تقرب هكا من الكولونيل الكافي وخطب له بنته خطب بنته وتزوجوا He made rapid progress after returning from the States. He was appointed assistant director of the new military intelligence and then general director. This post allowed him to discover the secrets of the military when the state was threatened by crises. The powerful new constitution party split into two wings. One was led by Bourguiba, who was negotiating for independence. The other was led by Ben Youssef, who fled to Cairo to his ally, Gamal Abdel Nasser. In an atmosphere of approaching civil war, the French bombed Sakiet Sidi Youssef on Tunisia's border with Algeria to hit the rearguard of the Algerian resistance. This was the first test for the Tunisian military intelligence. Ben Ali claimed later that he was injured, but no one could have prevented the attack. Then the real test for the new leader of military intelligence came from within the army itself. Wasila Benamar, Bourguiba's wife, discovered quite by chance a coup plot in 1962. Half the plotters were in the military, yet military intelligence failed to detect the plot. This failure could have ended this young officer's career, but it didn't. Perhaps because Ben Ali wasn't a great talker and avoided taking decisions, he wasn't sacked. هو كان منضبط وما يخالطش وما يشوف حد كل وزاره الدفاع اللي جاوا احسن جابوه كان تسهل توا من سحمد بن السيغي ومنغلق ثم شويه انغلاق فهمتني يعني كيف تتحدث معاه اولا من ناحيه بشريه ما ثماش يعني فكر متسع وثقافه نجم تتبدل الاراء معاه نظرا للمستوى الثقافي ومن ناحيه اخرى تشعر بنوع من الضيق فالانسان ما يتفتحش 
This life in secrecy didn't last long. The hand of destiny intervened and crossed it out using the pen of Ma'amar Gaddafi, who realized his dream of unity between Libya and Tunisia on the 12th of January, 1974. That day in a hotel in Jerba, the name of Zine al Abidin Ben Ali appeared on a list for the new union government that was proposed by Gaddafi. Many will talk for a long time about this secret relationship between Zine al Abidin Ben Ali and Gaddafi and about the role of Ben Ali's brother Munsef. Munsef worked in Libya and was close to the army. Many also talked of more serious suspicions that have never been proved. فهم ابتزوا أصحابها كي يشتغلوا معهم وهذا راه وقع في كثير من الدول في ألمانيا الشرقية أخيرا عندما انهار الاتحاد السوفيتي ونهار جدار برلين ألمانيا الغربية سيطرت على أرشيف ألمانيا الشرقية ووجدت فيه كل منظومات المخابرات السوفيتية في أوروبا الشرقية The unification project collapsed and the proposed government with it Prime Minister Hedi Nwira came to Bourguiba and expressed his amazement that Ben Ali's name had been proposed by Gaddafi and also about their mysterious relationship. The Moroccan period seemed a new and different page for Ben Ali. In those years, he discovered the strength of the political system built by King Hassan II. He was impressed by the great prestige of the throne. News came from Tunis that Bourguiba's regime was facing strong Marxist opposition. Persecutions of leftists followed one after another. A constitutional amendment was passed at the Congress of the ruling party. It gave Bourguiba the presidency for life. كان العالم مقسوم إلى معسكرين. تم معسكر الحكم والسلطة اللي تمثله البرجوازية الكومبرادور وما يسمى والديكتاتوريات العسكرية والانقلابات والرؤساء هؤلاء أصحاب الحزب الواحد وجهة النظر الواحد. وثم أيضا نشاط آخر سياسي. يمثله الشارع تمثله الجامعات تمثله الأجيال الجديدة يمثله الفكر الجديد اللي هي تتمثل في شعارات الاشتراكية واليسار ثم تطور حقوق إنسان و و و و و. The country was gradually losing its political immunity, which was based on the personality of Bourguiba, the father of the nation. It was heading for a severe economic crisis. Everything indicated that a storm was coming. Ben Ali hoped that at least he would be recalled, and he was.
The unhappy birds of Avenue Habib Bourguiba returned to their nest in the dark winter of 1977. The smell of blood emerged over the fire at the meetings of the party in power. They were keen on a decisive battle with the National Union, the oldest in the Arab world. The killing started on the streets of Qasar Halal, an industrial town. The machine was ready for the decisive battle. The interior minister was sacked. The minister of defense, Abdullah Fahad, took his place. This was the first step towards a more important decision, to bring back Zine al Abidin Ben Ali to become general director of national security. Ben Ali jabou fil nisf thani min shahr December, li bech yisand al militia ta al hizb fi dalik al waqt, wa kadalik bech yqma al naqabiyin wa al talaba wa al ghadab al shabi li mawjud fi dalik al waqt. واللي على اثره جاء الاضراب تاع 26 جانفي بعد ما قامت يعني سلسله من تكسير دور الاتحاد ومن مهاجمه النقابيين ومن فبركه القضايا يعني من ايقاف النقابيين جاء الاضراب العام باش يدافع على النقابيين وعلى الاتحاد العام وعلى البلاد. الاضراب هو في هليكوبتر في باب علي ويتصرف ويرش في العباد برا الشاش نتاعو هذه هي الاولى اثنين بن علي يعني وصل يجي للنقابيين اللي عذبوهم في زاورة وانا شخصيا ريت فهمتني باش يضربوا بساقه هكا يقول هو مازال حي يعني هو تلقاه يعني بغيبوبه نصف غيبوبه Despite international pressure, Habib Ashur was kept in prison with some companions. Ben Ali seemed to have scored an unexpected victory for the government. Some people considered him the strong man of the regime. He was promoted to the rank of general, but he remained far from the center of power. He was the violent man in the shadows, charged with special missions. These he carried out exactly as instructed, no more and no less. But he failed to foresee the infiltration in January 1980 of an armed group from Libya. They took over the mining town of Gafsa for three days with the help of the Libyans and the Algerians. Libya لا تريد بعد فشل واحدة جربة Libya لا تريد لتونس أن تتوحد مع الجزائر والجزائر لا تريد لتونس أن تتوحد مع Libya. ولذلك عملوا العملية مشتركة لإفساد العلاقة الثلاثية يعني هذه البنت اللي يتعاركوا عليها اثنين أزواج متقدمين لها كما قيل اللي هي الجزائر واللي هي ليبيا تعاركوا عليها هذول الأزواج وكما لو أن فجروا لهم قنبلة في بيت العرس وخرجوا للثلاثة أعداء the army quickly occupied the town. Some of the attackers were executed. But questions remained. Had the attackers really deceived the security forces? Or had Ben Ali connived with Gaddafi to let the attackers in? Why had no one taken any notice of reports from the Tunisian embassy in Beirut? They had warned the government that there was a terrorist threat to Tunisia. Bourguiba didn't wait for an answer. He exiled Ben Ali to Warsaw. Wasila Amar, the wife of the president, made a sarcastic remark. You sent him where he'll be trained in planning coups. She didn't know how right she was. In Poland, Ben Ali found a strong union led by Lech Walesa in the streets, opposing the communist dictator Jaruzelski in his general's cap. The African general saw the toughness of the Polish general and the efficiency of his campaign against solidarity and against the elite who were calling for democracy. This practical lesson was stimulating and no doubt Ben Ali learned a lot from it. أنه بعد وقت اللي جت بعد وقت اللي رجع لتونس 
ولا ولا هو يفبرك في 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 القضايا ويختلق في القضايا للنقابيين والمعارضين بصفه عامه. In September 1979, an Islamist group, leaders of political Islam, held a rally on a university campus to celebrate the beginning of the 15th century of the Hijriya calendar. Its emerging leader, Rashid Ghanoushi, declared that the century would see the setting up of an Islamic state. هذه المواجهة الكبيرة التي حصلت بين النقابات واتحاد الشغل لفتت نظرنا إلى جانب آخر من الموضوع. أن الصراع ليس له فقط بعد عقائدي بين الإسلام والماركسية بين الإسلام والعلمانية هنالك أبعاد اجتماعية للصراع وهذا البعد الاجتماعي لم يكن محل تركيز في عملنا خلال السبعينات التركيز كله كان على الجانب العقائدي وفي السميد وفي المكرونة وكذا لا نخليهم الزيادات هذيك نوقفهم نرجعوا في كلنا with this sentence that cancelled the raising of the prices, Bourguiba put out the fire of a revolt. It had lasted several days and had spread from the north to the south of the country. The bread revolt exploded in the last days of 1983. It was a difficult crisis for the weakened regime of the old leader. The situation required the intervention of the army, causing many deaths and injuries among those whom Bourguiba called his children. This revealed the store of gunpowder hidden beneath the ashes of a decadent society. In 1983, the first time in with the help of Kamal al Taif, persuaded his frightened Prime Minister, Mohamed Mzali, to invite back the man of Black Thursday who had been exiled in Poland. On the 29th of January, 1984, three weeks after the suppression of the Bread Revolt, General Zine al Abidin Ben Ali returned to Tunisia to become the new Director of National Security. It never occurred to any of those ministers that he would attend a cabinet meeting with them. He was the first soldier to do so since independence. Silence was the main trait of his character. He attended cabinet meetings but never gave his point of view and never defended a position. He behaved in the same way he had done when he worked in military intelligence. No, I don't talk about it. I don't talk about it. I don't وثانياً وثانياً هذاك الدليل اللي ثم تغيير في تونس يعني ثم انحراف في السياسه تاع تونس ما عندوش الكاليبر او الحجم تاع راجل دوله هو موظف دوله كبير موظف دوله سامي بالتدرج اصبح مدير امن وبخدمات ومساومات استطاع ما كانش صاحب قرار ولا صاحب تخطيط سياسي ولا صاحب منهجية ولا كذا متى أصبح يفكر في أنه يصير رئيس أو يصير رقم في هذا البلد عندما فكروا فيه أن يصبح رقم بن علي realized that the lift wouldn't take him any higher if he didn't make changes in security to attract attention he removed those who were accused of inefficiency in suppressing the bread revolt but he didn't forget the more important matter dealing with the national union he used the same methods he had used in 78, prisons and violence. He is himself. He is on the drugs. First. Second, for the prisoners, he will make them do some things. These things are either a crime, a crime of character, a crime of morals, a crime of society. It is a crime of violence. He was the first responsible for the arrest. والمسؤول الاول عن تتبعات ولكن السياسيين متبنين القضيه هذا هو ما ظهرش لان هكا الايقافات نتاع الخبز ولا نتاع 78 الناس تعرف 78 لهذه المئة 84 مزالي ما يعرفوش بالنسبه لهم انسان جندي ينفذ 
It's here in one of the cells of the Najaf prison facing the Mediterranean Sea that the Union leader Habib Ashur was thrown far from the violence in the streets of Tunis. In all the cities of the country, noble Union members, that's what the government called them, attacked the officers of the National Union and took them over. Then they announced the formation of the National Union for Work. The confrontation gradually transferred over to the media. The independent newspapers disappeared one by one. Then the activities of the Human Rights League, the oldest in the Arab world, were forbidden. لأن الإعلام والمنظمات الحقوقية تلعب دور الشاهد تلعب 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 الدور الكاشف عما يجري في السياسة بينما بن علي يريد أن يشتغل في السياسة بعيدا عن الأضواء وبعيدا عن أي شكل من أشكال المحاسبة أول مرة في البلاد ما هاتها ناس تقول راهو كذا صارت موتة وصارت تعذيب وكذا وكذا لا وقتها ثم ما عندهم الحال ما عجبوش معروف بعد انتفاضة الخبز جميع صحف المعارضة والصحف المستقلة مثل الرأي ولوفار والمغرب وحتى رياليتي وصحف الأحزاب الموقف والطريق الجديد والمستقبل والوحدة كلها توقفت احتجبت بالضغط المباشر أو غير المباشر. At the same time, the politics of the stick and the carrot were employed against the main opposition figures, in particular against Rashid Ghanoushi, the Emir of the Strong Islamist Movement. He was invited by Ben Ali to share a cup of coffee in Ben Ali's office in the Interior Ministry. ليس هناك أي حظر علي في أن أزور أي مؤسسة من مؤسسات البلاد فضلا عن أني طالب أنا كنت مسجل في كلية الشريعة في ذلك الوقت يعني بن علي was preparing for a big battle against the Islamist movement. Their influence had grown in the student body of the universities and in many mosques and in poor quarters and also in towns in the interior. This strong and growing organization was known since its Congress in 1981 as the Islamist Tendency Movement. In the spring of 1987, Hanushi was again Ben Ali's guest, this time in the humid prison of the Interior Ministry. <laughs> الحركة وجه نفسها أمام أمرين إما أن تغض الطرف عن عملية الإيقاف رمز أساسي لها أو أنها تسنده في ذلك فالخط الذي معناها هيمناه هو خط مسندة أمير الحركة وبالتالي الوقوف معه في هذه المعركة The Islamists reacted strongly on April the 23rd, thousands demonstrated in the heart of Tunis. They carried placards hostile to Bourguiba. The regime seized the chance and started a big campaign of arrests. ليس فقط في العلاقة بين النظام والحركة ولكن في تاريخ الحركة نفسها أي أنها بدأت تستعمل ورقة الشارع الشارع للضغط ولتهديد النظام وإضعافه في مرحلة كان فيها أصلا النظام ضعيفا. Both Bourguiba and Said Sassi relied on this iron general in their war against the Islamist opposition. The dependence increased with the dangerous developments that occurred in the summer of 1987. Four locally made bombs exploded in tourist hotels in Monastir, where Bourguiba was born and spent his summer holidays. This conspiracy was a flagrant challenge to him. The angry old leader responded in two ways. On the 26th of September 1987, 35 of the 90 accused men appeared before the state security court. A sentence of capital punishment was pronounced on Ghanoushi 
and on Saleh Kirke, who was on the run. Other sentences were pronounced on other accused men. Then on the 2nd of October, 1987, Zina Labadin Ben Ali, the strong general at the Ministry of the Interior, was appointed Prime Minister. Ben Ali can you meet the Janah? Womzali and Jamaat can you meet the Janah? Ben Ali can you meet the Janah? Hua, the head of Bakush, Abdullah Farhat, the Dola Latida, Dola the police, Dola the Burgiba, Dola Latida, Dola, may we say, Dola Lamika, being Kausin. Burgiba Yatkad, Wana. الناس اللي يلتجيوا للدين العمل السياسي مخطئين وما يظنوش تقدم الأمة وقال أنا حضرت عليه أنتم ما تنجموش توقفوهم أنا هذا أخا ما عندي أنا ما دمي حي نوقفه هذا الخطط أبو جيب وفهموه المحاتين بتاعه أن الشخص اللي يستعمله Ben Ali concentrated his efforts on neutralizing his main rivals, those close to Sayyah. He formed a government of technocrats to tackle the serious economic situation. He wanted to show that he was capable of political victories to hide his past role in security. Bourguiba agreed to his proposed list of ministers, but on the day they were to be appointed, he came under Sayyah's influence and changed his mind. This kind of action, now typical of the aging president, humiliated the new prime minister. And when Ben Ali tried to make him change his mind again, Bourguiba got angry and cursed him, and maybe even struck him. Ben Ali left the palace with his list of ministers, head down and deeply humiliated. It was now clear that the premiership would not suit the ambitious general any longer. The choice was clear and frightening at the same time. No shack, who gave her? Ben no Muscawi came a cool. I'm a caddy. You hear you? Burgeba, as the Karali Kalt Benali. The Karar had a ata, low was top, were Kelt Lambe, Tunes Freak Lambe. Abdo Abdullah worked her with Zir Alam and Burgeba. Who was all the top and Mubashar the old. فالقرار أطلع عليه بن علي قال له يا بن علي رأو أنت مقال يوم الاثنين. ما سوكسيون نبى قدما. This wasn't the opinion of Kamal Latif and of Hedi Bakush. Both pushed Ben Ali to seize his historic chance before it was too late. أما يمشي معه بعد بجيبة ولا هو يبعد هذا الموضوع يبعد و. On the night of the 6th of November, the Interior Ministry was transformed into an operations room directed by Ben Ali. Hedi Bakush left a party at the Russian Embassy. Ben Ali called him to the Interior Ministry. He told him to write the declaration of the coup d'etat. The Attorney General, El Heshmi Zamal, was also called in the middle of the night with seven doctors who certified that the old president was no longer capable of carrying out his duties. At the same time, General Habib Amar waited for the changing of the palace guard at midnight. The blue tanks of the National Guard surrounded the TV, government and ruling party buildings. The Algerian president, Shedli Ben Jadid, was the first to know and after him, the French Prime Minister, Jacques Chirac. But the last one to know was Habib Bourguiba, surrounded in his palace. And it was the voice of the new president, Zine al Abidine Ben Ali, who told him on the radio.
الفيزيولوجية ما كانتش موجودة عند الرئيس بورجيبة والرئيس بورجيبة هو أنقذ من من رذالة العمر ومن ومن مهزلة الحياة ومن عبء الشيخوخة هو أنقذ هو وقع له إنقاذ من الوعي والنضج ما يسمح لكل أبنائه وفئاته بالمشاركة البناءة في تصريف شؤونه In the minutes that passed during the declaration of the change, there was a deathly silence in the country. Ben Ali began the declaration with God's blessing, and he ended it with a verse from the Quran. He praised the wisdom of the Tunisian people and declared his readiness to move to democracy and multi-party politics. The declaration was full of everything and anything. It had been written very cautiously and embraced religious, civil and political values. <laughs> The general distanced himself from suspicions of a coup d'etat by focusing on the legitimacy of his action and on all the groups inside and outside the country. The whole country rose up. Activists and citizens went into the streets weeping and celebrating. The change was in a country that enjoyed the highest level of education in the Arab world and an exemplary middle class. This word, change, had a magical impact. None of the major political parties considered that it had been a coup. There was a mood of expectancy. ولكن قلنا فما ايجابيات وفما مكاسب اللي واحد ما يلزموش ينكرها ويلزم يحافظ عليها ويدعمها وانا وقلنا كونه فما السلبيات والسلبيات هذه يلزم القطع القطع معها نهائيا وبالخصوص قضيه الحكم الفردي But Ben Ali insisted on doing the exact opposite During the few weeks that followed the change of the 7th of November as it was called many amazing reforms followed and touched all aspects of life the embargo on trade unions and on the Human Rights League and press censorship were gradually lifted. On the night of Eid al-Fitr, Ashur, the leader of the National Union, was released, as well as Rashid Ghanoushi, the Islamist leader. After six years, on 6 November, 1988, he accepted me in the city of the number of prisoners released exceeded 2,000. Among them was the Islamist leader Ali Larayed, who faced the death penalty. He recognized the Islamic Students' Union at the university under the name the Tunisian General Union of Students. It was the rival to the long-established students' union led by the left. On his first trip abroad, the new president visited the holy places to perform the Umrah pilgrimage. An independent Ministry of Religious Affairs was created, and the High Islamic Council was revived. It even included leaders of the Islamist movement, like its founder, Abdel Fattah Muru. On state TV, programs were interrupted for calls to prayer, and the sighting of the new moon replaced the calendar for calculating lunar months, as if in repost to Bourguibian modernity. On the first anniversary of the change of the 7th of November, an Islamist lawyer, Nuruddin Bahiri, signed up in the name of the Nahada movement to a document of political principles called the National Charter. This charter was written by Mohammed Sharfi, the president of the Human Rights League. It declared that Tunisia was a democratic country for all its citizens, no matter what their differences were, and that the state would guard the tolerant and sacrosanct values of Islam.
On that day, most of the political parties were in Carthage to sign this charter. أصوات قليلة اللي اللي ترفعت باش نبه مثلاً ونخص بالذكر الحقيقة مقال شهير لسيشام زعيد. Because of this article, the review was closed down for many months, and the writer was put on trial while the world clapped the savior. ماشي ما مشيت تقراو توا ماشي نقرا وقتاش كيفاش تقراو شي اوقاتكم شو امورك الحمد لله بدر الرب الحمد لله كاش من عائله انتم هنا عندنا جي 50 60 50 as for the democracy the president had announced it seemed strange Ben Ali called on the left, the Islamists and the trade unions to draw up unified lists with his party, the RCD, the legal successor to Bourguiba's party. This attracted many opposition figures and academics who believed in the change under Ben Ali's leadership. It means that the first election of democracy, or the election of democracy, has a seat, the seat that you put in it, a seat, لون الاحمر فهمني هذاك الرئيس بن علي والصندوق الثاني باش تحط فيه ورقه واحده نتاع الجبهه فين التعدديه وفين الديمقراطيه فهمتني الدخول في قائمه واحده وتوزيع الحصص قبل الدخول للعمليه الانتخابيه بما يجعل العمليه الانتخابيه مجرد اخراج احمد المسيري كان محق عندما رفض هذه العمليه لانها تتناقض جذريا مع الديمقراطيه الديمقراطيه التنافس الكامل بعد ذلك أصبح لكل حزب له استراتيجيته وهنا يجب الإشارة بأن معناها حركة الاتجاه وقيادتها قيادة الاتجاه الإسلامي قد في البداية قد وافقت على أنها تشارك بعدد محدود من القائمات هذا هو التوجه في البداية لكن بعد ذلك تحركت القواعد وكلما تحركت مجموعة ثم إلا وقبلت قائماتهم إلى أنهم أصبحوا هم المنافس الوحيد والرئيسي للحزب الحاكم تقريبا في جميع الدوائر وثم نزلوا بقوة مفاجئة. This careless initiative offered the Ministry of the Interior a list of thousands of party members and sympathizers. Meanwhile, the RCD, the party in power, collected state civil servants and brought them by bus and truck to vote. They gave money to the voters outside the polling stations. In the fact, the fear was to destroy us. And this is what happened. And this is what made Ahmed Al-Masiri completely out of the way. Because it was a kind of fear. Because it was a kind of fear. The opposition list got 18% of the vote, of which two-thirds were for the MOVE list of the Islamists. But Ben Ali got 99% in the presidential election. A magical number that was to hold Tunisia captive for a quarter of a century. The honeymoon between the president and the Islamists was nearly over. One month after the election, Ghanoushi decided to leave the country. He asked for permission to go on the Hajj in May 1989, but he never returned and chose exile in London. The show of force in the elections revealed agreed to get into government by force. Ben Ali started to change his political compass. The first sign of this was his appointment of Mohammed Sharfi, 
the brain behind the National Charter as Minister of Education and Science. This former leftist was a sworn enemy of Islamism. Despite the fact that Shafi got help from some old Islamists for his educational reforms, the changes in the teaching of religious studies in schools excited Anahaz's anger. They attacked him in a violent declaration and accused him of degrading Islam. ولا اتصور ان ما قام به المرحوم محمد الشرفي هو من قبيل الاصلاح هذا الرجل قام منظومه اسلاميه قائمه فانجر في مقاومه التيار الاسلامي عن طريق سياسه حددها هو سماها تجفيف المنابع وراى ان تجفيف المنابع يقتضي قطع الصله بين الاسلام والناشئه الاسلاميه من خلال برامج التربيه فالغى كل ما يتعلق بالعقائد والعبادات وجعل قضية الإسلام هي قضية انتماء حضاري لقيم هي قيم إنسانية. The moment of truth came in 1990. In Algeria, a huge popular protest produced in months a jump of decades towards a democratic opening. The world watched with great concern the first multi-party elections in Algeria and the exciting emergence of the FIS, the Islamic Salvation Front. The front grouped together many Islamic tendencies, from the most extremist to the most moderate. This strong alliance of political Islam won more than 50% of the vote in municipal elections. This happened next door to the new Tunisian president and in front of his political rivals among the Islamists who had shouted the slogans of the change in the streets. And the second Gulf War gave them a suitable opportunity. Amid the roar of the American raids on Iraq, Ghanoushi declared from exile that Tunisians should be on the side of the Iraqi people. I did not agree with the decision that he took with Mr. Rashid Ghanoushi. And I was willing to consider that the attitude of the Kuwait is a attitude, in fact. And that it is a lie to the meaning of the country. وأنه الغاء لما اكتسبناه من تحضر يقتضي احترام الدول القائمة والقانون الدولي مؤسس على ذلك. بن علي also chose to go along with popular sentiment which strongly supported Saddam Hussein. The crisis presented a historical opportunity to approach the leftist and nationalist opposition who were still complaining about the results of the last election. Although Ennahda allowed its supporters to take part in the big demonstrations against the war, this led to violence and conflict, which provided a golden opportunity to the regime. The arrests came thick and fast. The paper, El Fajr, which spoke for the movement, was closed down, and the visa for the Islamist Students' Union was revoked in 1991. <laughs> المكتب التنفيذي ورئيس المكتب السياسي الحركة وكنت أجابه بوقائع مادية كنت أشاهدها وأعين الشباب الذين وقع إيقافهم من أجلها وأتصل بهم لأسأل هل هم منتسبون للحركة فيؤكدون ذلك لأنني لم أكن على علم بخطة تقتضي تحرير المبادرة لدى القواعد وجعل القواعد هم الذين يخططون لأعمال يقومون بها وهذا كان خطا كبيرا ارتكبته الحركه ينبغي تقييمه هذه الاستراتيجيه وقع في بعض اضطراب قليل لما القيادات التي ينبغي ان ان تقود هذه الاستراتيجيه الدوله وضعت يدها عليها واخذت تمارس القمع المفتوح In the same period the office of the RCD the ruling party was set on fire in Babswika this resulted in the death of one of the watchmen and in severe injuries to the other. That was the sign of a new phase in the confrontation. Made by the artisan of the change, many people seem to forget the general himself, who was the craftsman of Black Thursday. All those who received the amnesty of the 7th of November were now imprisoned by the craftsman of the 7th of November. 
but the movement survived for all to remember. The security forces arrived in huge numbers. Roads were blocked, houses searched, and whole areas besieged. A big campaign of arrests of the Islamist activists started and peaked in 1991. According to international organizations, the numbers arrested totaled 8,000. Thousands fled over the land borders to Libya and Algeria. The regime even pursued some of them outside the country and forced them back. They reimposed the ban on the hijab in state schools and faculties, and the security control of mosques reached unbearable levels. Heavy prison sentences were handed down. Some died under torture. Among them was this Islamist student, Faisal Barakat, who spoke out openly on TV and paid a high price for it. Jamal Barakat was sent to prison three times because he insisted in inquiring into his brother's death. For many years, thousands of families endured disturbance, imprisonment or assaults because of an imprisoned son, brother or husband. In 1992, while thousands fled the country to escape the horror of the regime, Leila Trabelsi officially entered the Tunisian political theater four years after the president's separation from his wife Naima, the daughter of General Kefi, and the one who was the cause of his rapid rise. Leila Trabelsi was born in Bab Jadid quarter in the old Medina of Tunis. She was a daughter of a poor family of 13, just like Ben Ali's. She lived an exciting life and didn't finish more than the first years of secondary education. She learned a few simple skills in her youth and worked as a secretary. Then she began to smuggle small products between Tunisia and Europe. Her role in smuggling led to her divorce from her first husband and to her establishing relations with powerful men in the Ministry of the Interior. They introduced her in 1984 to the new director of security who had just returned from Poland. It is supposed that this girl joined the Women's Intelligence Service and was used by Ben Ali to infiltrate political and military circles. But she was more intelligent than that. كانت متصلبة كانت حتى هي غيورة كانت تحبه عملت كل المستحيل كي تبقى معه عمل هو المستحيل كي يبقى معه. The grand absent de ce procès, c'est le propre frère du président tunisien, Monsef Ben Ali, soupçonné d'être le convoyeur de fonds et donc. The scandals in the president's family started to increase. In May 1992, the French issued an arrest warrant for Monsef Ben Ali for involvement in a big drug smuggling ring. The case was known in France as the Couscous Connection. As for Leila, she tried hard to put men who supported her into key positions of authority. This led to the birth of a complex mafia network, which began working, like all mafias, in dubious projects and illegal import-export contracts. They also demanded contributions from businessmen, whether they liked it or not, in exchange for protection and advantages. Leila in the first الأملاك العقارية الأملاك العقارية متاع الجانب ولا متاع التوانسة بالأخص على الجهة هذية كارتاج والمرسة وجمرت تخرج كل عشية كان حتى عبد الوهاب عبد الله ساعة ساعة يمشي معها وتختار الفلانية والفيلا الفلانية وكل شيء ويمشي والملاها ويقولوا له هاو نعطيه وكل شيء 
طرف الفلوس هذه معناها وتخرج منها اذا كان ما خرجش يخرجوه بالسيف ما كانش ياخذوها وفما املاك الاجانب اللي خذاوهم بالسيف يعني هذا شنو اللي عملت ليلى في الاول هكا هو ما فماش حاجه ما فماش حاجه تقرا اما بعد موت المنصف بن علي وقتها في نبدات تتكون شويه ولات قعدات في السالون بلو سما السالون بلو في كارتاج كل صباح ويتفاهموا على عمليات اليوم ولا عمليات الاسبوع The Republic was on the road to decadence to be replaced by the big image of the smiling president with shining black hair which never turned grey. This inspired president practiced his religious devotions and was fascinated by computers. He visited the poor quarters without forewarning and planted a tree every year. نصف الثاني من التسعينات كانت يعتبر أحلك فترة في التاريخ السياسي تونس المعاصر. وحيث سيطر فيها الاستبداد وأصبح الأمن السياسي يتحكم في كل شيء ساد الخوف ساد النفاق الاجتماعي يعني في قوى رئيسية في المجتمع اللي هي اتحاد العام التونسي للشغل الجامعة أو الحركة الطلابية والحركة الإسلامية وهو استهدف الاتحاد بالتدجيل والحركة الطلابية بالحصار والضرب والحركة الإسلامية بالاستصال أصبحت المعالجة الأمنية هي المعالجة السياسية لم يعد هناك عمل سياسي في إطار أحزاب تتنافس تتصارع وإنما أصبح الأمن هو الذي يدير الأعلام يدير المنظمات غير الحكومية وهي مفارقة عجيبة يدير الأحزاب السياسية بما أنه معناتها منعوني عن معنات على الكتاب على أي شيء على الريح وعلى وعلى المطر وعلى رأسيت لي معناتها نكتب على الناس اللي منعيني in the late 90s, Taufik Ben Brik became one of the very few journalists who defied the tyranny of the regime. His family paid dearly for this rebellion. This brave journalist wrote in the columns of a French paper, if in Algeria they kill journalists, in Tunisia they kill journalism. At the end of the 20th century, many people thought that Tunis was the Singapore of Africa. The country had achieved constant economic growth of around 6%. The vast majority of the middle class owned a car and a house. In fact, we can't attribute this economic glory to the wisdom of the new president only. Ben Ali had inherited a state which enjoyed as high a literacy rate as some European states. It was also a country where its first president, Habib Bourguiba, managed to avoid the pitfalls of heavy industry, which attracted the majority of the nationalistic regimes in the region. Women were also integrated into the job market, and birth control was practiced early on, thus sparing Tunisia the consequences of rapid demographic growth. The Tunisia that Ben Ali took over was a country which had advanced since the 70s with a liberal economic system operated by a modern society. Women participated strongly in it and people believed in the importance of education and in the culture of work. دخلت أموال كثيرة في عهد الحرب الأهلية متاع الجزائر أموال جنرالات وأموال مهربة كثيرة دخلت أموال من ليبيا كثيرة سوى أموال الدولة أو أموال السراقين But the businessmen were uneasy The decadence of the political opposition created a feeling of immunity in the president and his family as well as in the family of his wife Leila Trabelsi They started behaving like a true mafia who could not be controlled. The example that we can think about in the 90s is that it can be the Auchan, which is a big business in France. It wanted to come to Tunis to fix it in Tunis. It wanted to come to Tunis, and 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 it wanted to come to Tunis. وقالوا العائلات ترابلسية وشيبوب يتعاركوا على العمولة هذا يجبد ليه وهذا يجبد ليه هذا يجبد ليه هذا يجبد ليه حتى مولا وشان قلق وقال جو نانفستي با دونز اون ريبوبليك بانانيير يعني ما نحطش فلوسي في جمهورية موز ومشى لنفسه 
حل مشروعه في المغرب وخلق العمل في المغرب. Even high-level academics like Dr. Muhammad Talbi had had enough. This professor, who is considered one of the founders of the Tunisian university, was prevented from publishing the thesis of one of his students. So he concentrated all his anger on the president of the republic. He wrote in an article which was published by Arabic magazines, Dr. Thalbi became one of the founders of the National Council for Liberties and of the League of Free Writers, which gathered together some of the refuseniks. The National Council of Liberties published a violent report which reached international organizations. The report brought out the dark face of the free press and the unrelenting censorship of the regime. This courageous report was produced by people like Sihem Ben Sadrin, Sabri El Khiari, and Taufik Ben Brik. On the 3rd of April 2000, Taufik Ben Brik decided to begin a hunger strike to have restrictions lifted on his passport and private phone. This strike coincided with Bourguiba's death at his assigned residence. Journalists from all over the world rushed to cover Bourguiba's funeral, but the regime firmly refused to allow them and attack some of them. So all the attention of hundreds of journalists was diverted to the only other event of any interest in the country, the one about the journalist who had already started his hunger strike to have his phone reconnected. في تلك السنة يعني 99 مع وفاة بورجيبا المجتمع التونسي بدأ يستعيد وعيه وظهر ذلك من خلال إضراب الجوع الذي شنه توفيق بن بريك ثم إطلاق النار على الصحف في رياض بن فضل ثم الندوة الوطنية للحريات في جويليا يوليو 2000 بدأت الأطراف الدولية تشك في روايته السابقة حول الإسلاميين وبالتالي بدأ الحديث حول بن علي الدكتاتور. The destiny of the general still had some happy surprises in store. On 9-11-2001, the world was shaken with images of the biggest terrorist operation in modern history. One day later, the president's newspapers talked with a triumphant tone. After a short period of cooling off between the West and Ben Ali, the special relationship was renewed with the wise general, who had overcome the danger of fundamentalism with calm and efficiency. In 2003, while human rights activist Radia Nasrawi began a long hunger strike, Jacques Chirac declared on a visit to Tunisia. The first of the rights of the man is to eat, to be treated, d'avoir, de recevoir une éducation. De ce point de vue, il faut bien reconnaître que euh, la Tunisie est très en avance. On the 18th of October 2005, this former socialist began a hunger strike with seven other opposition figures, exploiting the start of the World IT Congress in Tunis, held at the same time. Among the hunger strikers was an Islamist leader, another extreme leftist, a rebellious judge, and the head of the journalist union, Lutfi Haji. <laughs> حرية الإعلام ولذلك مثلا أنا شاركت في هذا الأضراب بوصفي أن ذلك كنت رئيس نقابة الصحفيين التونسيين يعني أول نقابة مستقلة للصحفيين يتم تكوينها وحرية التنظم لأن النظام كان يرفض إعطاء الرخص للأحزاب والجمعيات المستقلة والإفراج عن المساجين السياسيين باعتبار أنه في تلك الفترة كان هناك عدد كبير من المساجين السياسيين هذا التقارب بين المعارضة كان ربما الحدث الأبرز في السنوات الأخيرة لأنه أبرز للجميع أن نظام الحاكم لم يعد بإمكانه أن ينفق إلى ما لا نهاية من تشتت المعارضة وضعفها وعدم قدرتها على التوافق. In the last years of Ben Ali's government, there were many signs of the approaching storm. In 2008, 
the mining town of Gafsa was shaken by demonstrations against economic neglect. In the following months, social protests led by courageous union officials spread to Feriana, to Sghira, and to Ben Gerdan in the south of the country. Ben Ali was living in a very difficult world. وكان محوره الأساسي هو ابنه الذي كان ينتظره منذ سنوات طويلة ولذا كان يقضي جزء كبير من وقته في القصر للعب مع ابنه بينما ملفات الدولة والملفات الكبرى كانت موكولة إلى الوزير الأول أو إلى وزراء عاديين أي أن بدأنا نشعر بأن الدولة تسير بدون ربان وبالتالي عندها بدأنا ندرك بأن الرئيس بن علي يقترب من نهايته صار هو صار مطمان في تونس إلى درجة ما عادش يقدر يتوقع أي شيء يحصل له صار مطمان لأنه من كثرة التملق والنفاق وقول نعم 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 وعنده رجال ومخبريه وكذا وناس وكذا وهذا وهذا أصبح مطمان ما عادش يجيه لا شكل من يمين ولا من يساره وهي تلك هي السلطة غدر السلطة أيضا كبير جدا الخيانة في السلطة ترفرف فوق أكتافك وهي تنام تحت مخدتك وكل واحد يطمان للسلطة في اللحظة يعرف أن السلطة بدأت تتنكر له The correspondence from the American Embassy in Tunis that was published by Wikileaks revealed that for years the Americans also believed that the regime was unwilling to change in that correspondence, Soa Arafat confirmed Ben Ali's withdrawal and the narrowing of his life to playing with his son, and also confirmed Leila Trabelsi's dominance over him. The leaks revealed the dangerous levels of corruption in the president's family. Sakhar al Matari kept a pet tiger in a cage and called it the Pasha. It ate four chickens a day. This reminded me of the picture of the tiger kept by Uday Saddam Hussein. And when the Zaytuna Islamic Bank, owned by Sakhar al-Matari, offered a gold model car to the president's son on his sixth birthday, things turned upside down. بن علي هذه طبيعته هذا هوسه غيور وخجول وكتوم واناني والحياه تهمه هو مركزه وبالتالي كشعر بالخطر اقترب منه هز طيارته راح ما استطاعش لا يفور لا ينور لا يقاوم لا يقاتل لا اي شيء انفلت لكي يتمتع بما تبقى له من عمر ومن ثروه تلك هي طبيعة هؤلاء الرجال